All right, we're here with fifth year senior, Sam Shalvey, Otterbein, uh, wrestler. Sam, you know, it's been a while since I talked to you last and the whole world turned upside down, Yeah, did, right? Did, did. So why don't you just walk through maybe what last year presented to you as a wrestler and the Otterbein wrestling program and just get us caught up where you're at. Yeah, so uh, last year um, was pretty unfortunate end of the season. Uh, we had uh, Drew Casper, who's our heavyweight. Um, he was undefeated, 30-0, and zero going, going into the uh, national tournament. He's coming off a regional title. And we also had our uh, true freshman named uh, Ryan Witten, uh, who won a regional title as well. He was kind of under the radar the whole year and kind of popped off at the end. Um, so it was pretty unfortunate with uh, you know, COVID canceling the um, NCAA tournament with those guys. You know, Drew's career ended on a really bad note, um, although now he's in the WWE chasing that, that dream. Yeah. So yeah. that's really awesome for him and his older brother Jacob. And then Ryan's back. Um, he's still got you know, a few years left of eligibility, uh, only being a true freshman in 2019-2020. So we're really excited about Ryan. And, uh, and then the rest of the guys, you know, we've just been training really hard. Um, this past year, uh, the 2020-2021 season, we weren't able to get a whole lot of matches in. Uh, we just had two tries that we were able to attend, uh, interconference tries. So, you know, not a whole lot of mat time, but, um, you know, we did the best we can. We had a little bit of a younger squad this past year, uh, you know, but the guys did the best they could. They got some good experience. Um, the freshmen kind of got thrown into a crazy situation coming in, uh, but they did a great job adapting to the circumstances that and the challenges that the year presented and just getting tested three times a week, you know, that's like not fun. And uh, yeah, the guys did well overall. Um, and then individually, uh, you know, I, I don't have the season that I really wanted to have this past season, you know, being off the mat from March of 2020 all the way till August, you know, it was just a long time off the mat. And uh, it felt really good to get back on the mat, you know, it was just like, I mean, I remember lacing my shoes for the first time. I was like, man, I can't believe I'm doing this again. Like it felt like, I was like, I don't know when the next time I'm gonna be able to do this is, but it was just really awesome uh, being able to wrestle again last summer. And then uh, as we got into the season and, getting to wrestle all the guys again. It just felt so natural and uh, it, it was really awesome. So um, I ended up getting six matches in this past season, so not a whole lot. I think the whole team was under 10 matches for everybody. Um, but the matches that we did get, you know, we did wrestle some good competition. We went up against uh, Baldwin Wallace and John Carroll, uh, who are two of the top five teams in the country, you know, on opening weekend. Um, so we all got challenged pretty tough up there. Uh, and then the following week we came back and we wrestled Ohio Northern and uh, Wilmington University. So those were um, a little bit less challenging matches, but good experience for our guys. So overall, you know, um, we really can't complain. We were pretty disappointed when the NCAA tournament got canceled again yeah. for the second year in a row, as, yeah. every, as everybody was. Um, but we kind of had a feeling that it was going to kind of happen the whole time, you know, because they had to meet that certain percentage of teams to be able to have the tournament. And it just didn't end up materializing. So um, it, it was just a cool year overall, just to kind of just kind of um, settle settle down a little bit, not not so worried about performance and wins and losses, more just about getting better for this upcoming season. So it's just cool to kind of have that because usually every year you're in a in a grind of like I need to peak for March, peak for March. Whereas this year was kind of dialed back, just focus on getting better, getting reps in with our techniques and. Um, you know, Coach Rassler was able to teach a lot more this year than in a normal year when we're kind of drilling more and live wrestling more. He's able to teach a lot more, which is cool. And I, I was able to learn some new techniques from him that I hadn't seen before and practice those um, along with the rest of the guys. So it was a really awesome experience. And it was cool to have that dialed back year. And now we're looking forward to kind of getting back into the normalcy of this year um, as, you know, the season's approaching. So, yeah. So you, so you're now your fifth year senior. You find yourself more in a leadership role that one of the older guys on the on the team, right? Correct. So talk us through a little bit about what that feels like for you, and you're what the only guy, the only guy that decided to take that that you know free pass, if you will. Yeah, right? yeah, yes. I'm the first guy, or as far as uh, guys that were left on the team from that original fall of 2017 group that came in uh, this past year. Me and Michael Dozney, uh from Worthington Kilbourne High School here in Central mm -hmm. Ohio, mm -hmm. we were the only ones that um, were still around. You know, uh, going into this past season, and Michael decided that he wasn't going to take the fifth year. He's going to um, graduate, move on. Uh, he's going to Wright State University this fall for his masters, and then uh, I decided that I was going to take my fifth year because um, I didn't change my major couple times so I still have some classes I have to take anyway mm -hmm. for the fifth year so I figured I'm just gonna use my last year of eligibility and wrestle right because um, I want to maximize I want to max out use all my eligibility you know um, so I'm really happy about that really fortunate to get the fifth year mm -hmm. especially with this past season you're not getting a lot of matches 
know, I would have been pretty disappointed if this past season was able to be was would have been my last year. Yeah. So really happy with getting the fifth year, and uh, it's really cool. Um, I got voted uh, one of the team captains this past or you know last summer 2020. Mm -hmm. So kind of um, being in that leadership role with all the younger guys coming in now, you know, guys that are like four or five years younger than me now uh, on the, as my teammates, it's a pretty unique experience, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, kind of seeing the age gap a little bit, you know, I feel like I'm pretty old and some of these younger kids, just some of the trends that are going on, there's the things that kids talk about. I'm kind of like <laughs> trying to stay caught up with all that, you yeah. know, like all the TikTok stuff. Yeah. And I feel like I'm like, man, I feel so old. I'm trying to relate to these kids the best I can, talk to them, but it is tough sometimes. Um, but being around kids, you know, that are younger, it kind of helps you stay young. So even mm -hmm. though I'm 22, which that's not even that old, I'm still trying to relate with the 18, 19 year old kids, you know? So it's, it's a cool experience and, um, you know, I'm trying to be a leader and just help all the kids have fun, you know, and just doing the best I can. So it's been a really cool being, being in that leadership position. I get to be in that position again this year um, with my last year here at Otterbein. What so. advice would you give yourself to, 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 the, to the kid that walked in this room the first time? What yeah, would you say? Yeah, I'd say uh, just, just enjoy it, you know. It's, it's uh, Division three wrestling. You know, everyone here is just passionate about the sport. You know, we're not getting any scholarship money or anything from, for wrestling. Um, so it just, I just say have fun with it. Just take it all in. Don't, don't stress yourself out about things. Uh, coach Rasser is a phenomenal coach. He's a phenomenal technician. So you're going to learn a lot being in this room. Um, anyone is, regardless of what high school program you came from, you're definitely going to learn some new things from him. So just take it all in. Just enjoy the experience. Just do the best you can. Just drill hard, wrestle hard, and you're going to have a fun time. So that's, that's all I would say. It, it's not supposed to be a stressful experience being here. Although, yes, you know, when, when the grind of the season comes around, it can be stressful at times, you know, trying to do things right in the practice room, trying to wrestle hard, um, trying to compete hard you know trying to make weight yeah that can be stressful um, but I would just say just don't make it stressful you know just have fun joke around you know we we love joking around on the team you know we have a really uh, great bond with everybody so it's it's a it's been a phenomenal experience for me and I think the freshmen you know um, this past season none of the freshmen uh, walked away from the program or anything they all decided to come back and so in a year like that it's pretty awesome, you know, because years past we had kids, you know, trickling away after the season ended, deciding to do other things. So the fact that, you know, that, that freshman group, they all decided to stick around in the craziest year that we had so far with COVID and all this stuff going on, getting tested three times a week. The fact that they were all able to stick around, come back for this coming season really shows that, you know, we did a good job uh, with the leadership in this program of making it fun for everyone, making everyone have a good time. When these freshmen come into college, it was like such a crazy experience for them. Going to college is already crazy as it is, coming as a freshman in college and to come into this experience was something else. Yeah, so yeah. I was, I, I'm pretty proud of the fact that all these freshmen decide to stick around and come back. You know, I take a lot of pride in that myself. I know the coaches do too. Tell us a little bit about the Otterbein academic experience. For, the, for some, somebody out there that might not know, what is this Otterbein that's in the middle of, uh, in the middle, of, the middle of, of Ohio, right? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. So I, I'd say the academic experience here is awesome. Uh, a lot of the teachers here, um, you know, they're all phenomenal people. They're all reaching out all the time, trying to give you help, trying to give you the resources that you need. Um, they're always communicating through email, um, you know, through office hours. There's, all, there's, so, many, there's so much help here. For for you. There's, you know, being on the wrestling team, having the study table hours that keeps you on track, um, gives you opportunities to work on your homework, gives you like a safe space where you're not distracted, you know, all these distractions going around you. Um, the professors here really, really provide uh, amazing opportunities for you in terms of internships, always emailing you about opportunities. Um, so yeah, I just say overall, it's, it's an amazing experience overall. And I, I have nothing to complain, you know, being here four years um, and, and a few different majors. I've, I've gotten to, um, Pick, pick things from different professors, you know, and, and see how different professors teach different ways. And, um, you know, some, some have taught, you know, like specifically for my uh, learning style better than others. Um, but it's been a phenomenal experience overall, and they're all really nice people. They're all here to help you out, um, and they're all here to communicate with you and reach out to you. And so, yeah, I would just say overall it's been a phenomenal experience academically for me. Awesome. All right. Well, why don't you get us? Why don't you tell us a little bit about what more you've got in plan for? What's Sam Shalvey up to now? You know, what's next for him? Yeah, yeah. So for me, um, I've I've decided to kind of dial it back from uh, coaching a little bit. Um, I'm not I'm not coaching at Westville South anymore or the uh, Columbus Wrestling Club. Um, but now I've kind of decided to. 
um, you know, try to build my personal brand as like a wrestling influencer, so to speak. Um, my younger brother, Jacob, uh, is big in the fitness industry. Um, he's, he, he goes to Ohio State down the road. He's two years uh, younger than me. Um, but he's really doing a lot of things in the fitness industry. Uh, he has a couple different sponsorships from a couple different companies. And uh, being, you know, seeing him grow in that industry and seeing all the other guys around him grow in that industry. I mean, because I follow the industry a lot, because um, I can kind of stay up, stay updated with him and kind of talk to him about stuff. And and I'm I'm passionate about fitness too, so I enjoy following all those guys and watching their YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, it's given me a lot of inspiration to kind of do a similar thing with wrestling. So I think wrestling has a lot of untapped potential in terms of media and what people can do with uh, social media in the wrestling industry um, in terms of like posting consistent content on Instagram and YouTube, um, like wrestlers about their training, you know, vlogging their training, uh, vlogging, you know, posting pictures, you know, and them and their singlets with their guys and stuff like that. I feel like, you know, and with college wrestling, um, with the new uh, NIL, name, image, image, and likeness thing happening, um, where you can now make money on your name, image, and likeness, I think it's something that a lot of college wrestlers should take advantage mm -hmm. of and figure out, you know, start making, make a YouTube channel, vlog content, post content consistently on Instagram and YouTube, because uh, there's so many opportunities out there, you know, and you might as well do it, you know, because you're a broke college student wrestling college, you know, <laughs> right. at the D2, D3 level, D1, you're getting some money, but you're still probably broke, so mm -hmm. it's like, why not do that and get some sponsorship money, you know? The people in the fitness industry have figured it out, so we need to kind of do that with wrestling, and it really isn't that hard to post consistent, I mean, it's hard to post consistent content, but it's not that hard to get started. I think a lot of people overthink it, and a lot of kids are like, oh, I don't have a camera, I don't have, you know, a laptop, and all this stuff that I need to have. You, you really don't need that. If you have an iPhone, you can vlog from your iPhone. Um, you just need to get started. That's mm -hmm. my biggest advice to people. So um, I've decided to start that, you know, this past year is when I kind of started my, uh, you know, wrestling YouTube channel and I'm hopping on TikTok now and trying to figure that out. And I try to post consistently on Instagram, just like how my brother is doing, you know, he grew from, he had 10,000 followers last year. He just hit 10,000 followers last July of 2020. Mm -hmm. Now he's up to 47,000 followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So, and that didn't happen overnight. It was just a process of him just being consistent with quality content mm -hmm. and anyone can do it you don't have to be an expert wrestler I, I I'm a nobody I, I don't I mean compared to some of these like national champ guys if the Olympics is going right now I know David Taylor I know Gable Stevenson but I can still add value to the industry you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um, through the stuff that I know and provide it through content mm -hmm. so that's what I would recommend to people you don't have to be an expert you know you could just be a random d3 wrestler like how I am a random d2 wrestler you could be anybody just create content and add value and and things will happen for you so where, what, where can we find you on social media yeah so my YouTube is just uh, Sam Shalvey my Instagram is at Sam Shalvey um, I'm not on Twitter anymore um, but I'm on TikTok at Sam Shalvey and then uh, Snapchat uh, Sam Shalvey underscore 52 so okay. th those are those are kind of the main platforms I feel like uh, Instagram and YouTube are probably the main ones TikTok is really big now too so my recommendations for people if you're trying to get started as a you know call yourself an influencer or whatever um, I would say make an Instagram if you don't have one pretty much everyone has one make a YouTube channel and make a TikTok and just be consistent on those platforms and watch watch what other people are doing and try to use their pick their tips pick their brain and make content and post it so nice. you, you don't have to be an expert to do it just figure it out well I love the, the outside the box thinking Wrestling always seems to be a little bit behind everybody else. Yeah. But I love the fact that you're willing to make a go at this. Yeah, for and, sure. And obviously, you know, one of these days we're going to look back and say maybe he was a leader in this area. Yeah, but, yeah. But but encouraging other people, but also just uh, just saying, you know, this isn't it isn't that difficult to do. Give yeah. it a shot. Why not? Yeah, it's not. And there's and there's there, there's one guy. There's probably only one or two guys that are creating uh, wrestling content, you know, besides me, there's two other guys, uh, Caden Henschel, who wrestles at a UW Parkside, he's kind of the first one to start this a few years ago and create consistent content for wrestling, and his, his YouTube channel is doing really well, I think he's at 70, 70 some thousand followers on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Kelly from St. Paris Graham High School down the road here in Ohio, he makes consistent content as well, he's not as big as Caden, but he's still really big, he was really big on a, on a TikTok before his TikTok got taken away, <laughs> um, they took him off TikTok, but he's still big on Instagram. He's got a lot of stuff going on for him. So those are two prime examples. If you want to look at guys, how, how to how to create wrestling content, look at Caden Henschel and Chris Kelly. 
I think he wrestles at uh, SEU now down in Florida. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would just recommend looking at those guys. You know, and I'm trying to be like those guys too, you know. Mm -hmm. And then guys like RBY who are a little bit bigger of wrestlers, they're trying mm -hmm. to do the same thing. Gable Stevenson. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone's trying to create content, you know. Cliff Fretwell, who runs the Compound Cleveland, he's trying to create content as a coach, you know. Mm -hmm. So I look up to all these guys, what they're doing. I look at the content they're posting and trying to do similar things. If wrestling can get more people doing this kind of stuff, whether you're a wrestler or a coach, it doesn't matter who you are, just adding value to the wrestling industry, you can make wrestling more popular, you yeah. know? I mean, people love fitness now because of all these fitness influencer, influencers that are popping up, whereas kind of back in the day, everyone's like, oh, like, I don't like lifting, I don't wanna go to the weight room, it's it's hard, mm -hmm. you know? You make something that, in wrestling, super hard, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but all of a sudden, you make something that, that's super hard into like a fun activity, and like, oh, I wanna be a wrestling influencer, you know? Mm -hmm. And now you're training all the time, filming yourself. I mean, it's, it's fun, it's fun to, get likes, every kid's all about getting likes now, everyone yeah. loves getting likes and views on their videos. So go train and film it, you know, and post it, you know, and show what you know, you know, hit your single, hit your head side single leg, hit your tilt, you know, hit, hit your stuff in the practice room, film it and post it. Um, anyone can do it, and if you're just consistent with it, you're gonna grow, and if you have a good personality, you know, just be yourself, don't try to be someone that you're not. Those are just all the big recommendations I would say. I mean, anyone can do it, whether you're a high school kid, college kid, whether you're at the Olympic level, whether you're a, a coach, you know, high school coach, a club coach, anyone can make content for yep. wrestling. Yeah, well, you've, 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 got, you've shown that you've got a ton of passion, whether it's on the mat, whether it's as a coach, whether it's helping out with USA Wrestling Ohio, which you've done in the past, and, and, and you know, here, obviously, um, being your, your senior year, and this is a great way for you to continue to grow the lo your love of the sport, but for other people as well. What a unique way to do it, and I'm glad I was able to, to uh, ask you about it and you could get it out there. So good luck to you, man. Um, we're going to be watching you your senior year coming up, and um, we wish the best for you. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. Yep.